Hey everybody, we Andrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode here of Eco Trails Wildlife Sanctuary. So yeah, today's episode is going to be a little bit different, and that's because I'm going to go ahead and uh, nominate myself for an early Bonehead of the Year award. I give you your moron. He's a knucklehead. A knucklehead, Kenny. Can you hear me? I heard you very well. Are you hear me already? Too much. Hard not to. Okay, not a problem. Pretty good. Pretty good show so far, guys. Um, yeah, all of the footage for this episode, because you might notice there's a little bit of a different skyline going on. Uh, yeah, I had a whole bunch of um, footage all made up. I started editing things even, and I was kind of on my way to making the episode, and um, I started to get a full disk space on my computer. So again, bonehead of the year, me, went to go free up some space, and I completely accidentally, permanently deleted the footage from the last uh, last little build that I did and everything in the last uh, episode, or this episode's earlier footage. So yeah, that was awesome. Spent some time trying to recover it real quick, but uh, too much time had already passed before I kind of realized what I did, and it was unrecoverable, um, unless I wanted to pay like a clean like 70 to $80 for like a professional service. Anyways, long story short, bummer. <laughs> Big bummer. So today, like I said, gonna be a little bit different where uh, we're still gonna be um, covering some management stuff and a lot of changes to the zoo but it's gonna be more of like a tour show off and catch up uh for all of you uh subscribers and uh, followers there and everything so like i said big first change you're gonna see is gonna be the skyline up here and we'll talk about that in just a little bit but another big change you're gonna see down here is uh starting from the right to left uh yeah it's year 37 now i think when we left off last time it was like year 12 or 13 or something so yeah we'll talk about that in a minute so that's a big change it's a big uh time time jump right we're, we're in the future um we also have a bunch more leafy points i think we only had like a thousand or underneath that a little bit um and our money money is way way up there as well so yeah the the whole vibe of the um a wildlife sanctuary here is just a little bit different isn't it so a little uh maybe a little jarring so uh let's explain some things here or uh, catch everyone up a little bit so the time jump the big thing there is that for our build today when i was starting to uh get into it for i'm sure you saw on the title screen and everything um i for the simings and everything i started to build but uh it was just not working out i was cutting corners and just really not liking how things uh, turned out. So long story short, I sat here for uh, quite a while, actually hired another mechanic who is now uh, no longer working for us. They were like a research mechanic. Uh, but as you can see, all of the first level of the themes have been uh, researched. The only thing I um, haven't researched so far is the transport rides, which I need to get, and the rest of the barrier? No, uh, the food shops. That's it. The rest of the food shops. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we have the first level of basically everything else. Not going to do the second level. Don't need the uh, blueprints, the fr uh, frontier blueprints. I use the steam workshop blueprints uh, more so. But uh, anyways, yeah, like I was saying, I had to go ahead and get um, all of the pieces to kind of build uh, what I want to show you all in just a little bit. So so um, along with that, we did a heck of a lot of a uh, vet research as well. Actually, by heck of a lot, I mean all of the vet research. Uh, so we did a lot of enrichment items as well to our um, existing habitat animals, the quokka, the babarusa, um, the uh, water monitor, and the, I'll show you just a little bit, but the saimang, our new um, habitat animals. Uh, so you got them all um researched and everything like that. Also had to go ahead and we had a little bit of a si uh, simian fever breakout when we got our simangs in here. Uh, so quickly researched that and got them going all good. No problem uh, there. So there's a little catch up with that. We do have a heck of a lot more research. So we are geared up uh, for future episodes to kind of just tackle uh, problems and um, issues and everything. However, uh, we need to not really restrained anymore, right? So a few other uh, quick little notes is I uh, got some great tips from Simply Savannah during some live streams. I did live stream a lot of this build oh, um, over on TikTok. I'm starting to stream over there. So if you're on TikTok scrolling around every once in a while and you're not following me, it's the uh, same handle, Beyond Drew TV. Go ahead and follow me over there. And I am live during the week and the weekend uh, for a few hours every so often. So, uh, but yeah, she gave me a great tip about uh, we were constantly building in the dark and having to wait and stuff like that for um, daylight to come around. And she just recommended, hey, why don't you switch around 
the uh, daylight or the uh, hours of your zoo uh, to more daylight kind of centric. So that's what we went ahead and did and went ahead and increased the price, which is still very, very underpriced, but we're making a heck of a lot of money. Um, some of the ticket prices as well, but we don't need to charge a whole bunch really because we're making a lot of money. So, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and go in. We're going to go um, right to left, save all the fun new stuff until the very end, but to be honest with you, if you are a follower, or excuse me, if you're a follower of the zoo, there's new stuff all over the place that I need to catch you up on. Because again, we got a bunch of new um, enrichment items. So each little habitat is going to look a little bit different. Um, and we're going to have a few different animals in all of the... Um, habitats as well it's a lot of we're on like the second or third generation of our quakas why don't i catch you up with their names just in case you want to keep up with them uh right now we have five quakas three uh females and two males we have some contraception going on because there's a lot of um family members kind of together and everything but um yep so we have akira adelia um inua monty and yarin actually i think a few of those sound familiar maybe they are the um sons and daughters or grandkids or whatever of some of the other uh, quakas that we used to have but yeah there is our current pack of quakas with their new enrichment items they are fully all the animals have 100 percent enrichment now if not more if they could uh, especially the quakas they love all their new um, items here so yep there they are they're enjoying their uh, habitat a whole whole lot there let's go ahead and move over to the babarusa who um, like I was saying before with the quakas, they have a lot of new um, little en enrichments and enhancements here. We got some a mud pit over here. Um, let's see, we have the foraging uh, pit. We have the uh, barrel here. Uh, so yeah, a lot of fun things with our um, babarusas. Also needing to keep an eye on the um, the kids in here and make sure that none of them are yes so we do have a um, issue here we do need to get rid of kalia pa uh they were that's the uh, son of these two here they had a um what was it a daughter um son combo here but yeah we have to get rid of the son because he is an outsider so let's go ahead and release them to the wild thanks so much for hanging out we'll get our nine leaf points for Kalipa. Now they are all uh, squared away with their habitat. So looking very good over there. Let's go underneath our rock archway to the Asian water monitors who I believe are either pregnant or about to give birth. Let me double check. They just messed with their, um, uh, their little rubber duck, one of the new enrichments for them. Their enrichment is all the way up. But let's see, that's the male I'm clicked on. So I'm not seeing anything, but let's click on our female real quick. See if we can't get some info. Yes, yeah, so we do have offspring coming in April of 38. So we're in uh, June of 37 right now. Um, and if I, yeah, our big problem over here is we're going to have to expand this habitat um, in the next episode. Uh, it is way too small. And if we're expecting offspring, um, that it's not going to happen, is it? They're, they're already a little bit stressed out. If we take a look here, their social is a little bit stressed out from their habitat being small so if we add in even one more um water monitor they're going to be extremely uh stressed out i believe so yeah we probably need to look into the next one uh getting rid of getting rid of excuse me this pathway over here and um yeah going ahead and expanding out our uh, water monitor habitat a little bit um something else we need to focus on a little bit for management i'm starting to notice that a lot of our uh, bins are getting knocked over so uh, we'll need to focus on security a little bit as well uh, but again, that's going to be a next episode thing. This is a little bit of a uh, weird in-betweener episode. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go ahead and spin around as we start to see some. Actually, you know what? Real quick before oh, I got a little glimpse of the new stuff. But why don't we check out our creepy crawly cave? Uh, yep, because there we go. I did do a few things and I need to uh, kind of edit them because that's not going to work out. We have some rocks in the middle of the pathway because I was trying to give our water monitors uh, some room before the episode started. But that did not work out. There we go. So I wanted to go check back here. But let's see how else they're doing over here. Everything's looking good. How many do we have here? We have... Um, da -da 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 -da. We have our two and two still, and they are young adults, so good. We're um, doing good with age there, and same thing with our uh, bow constrictors, two young adults. So they're just going to keep on making money. And actually, speaking of that, before we get going too much farther, uh, let me not, don't forget to feature some of your amazing comments, because uh, one of them does have to do with um, exhibit animals. So let's come on back here to the front of the zoo, and then we're going to go check out some new stuff there. 
But uh, the first one let's check out is from Miss Writer 21 who says, Love the new entrance. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, just started playing again, and I jumped back into my old franchise zoos. Uh, my most successful animals for breeding are and gaining the leafy points through trade has been the warthogs. I've had them in all of my zoos, and they get a lot of traffic and aren't nervous. Oh, that's very, very good. The nervousness is a big thing we have to keep an eye on. So we might need to keep an eye on uh, warthogs uh, for our next uh, few animals and stuff like that. Also, the more exhibit animals and insects you have, the more chance you have to do quick trades for them for more cash. Offspring happen very quickly with those. Uh, can't wait to see more of the zoo. It looks amazing. Well, thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate that. And yes, you are absolutely correct. The exhibit animals, the just the two uh, boxes we have right now, um, we're already making so much money um, from all of those. So yeah, that is a great bit of advice. And thanks for so much for the uh, comment there. Next one, let's take a look from Primal Gamer who says, uh, don't get me wrong, I like the old entrance, but I really love the new entrance now. Uh, the foliage work is really well done. Uh, for suggestions for the left side of the entrance, I think a jungle themed gift shop would be a perfect for that space for some more income. And if you're inclined to put an animal in that space, I think a cassowary or a saimang would be a really cool choice. And yes, this was the comment that kind of sparked this entire um, idea for this whole build that we're gonna go look at today, because that is exactly what we do. We kind of take those two ideas in that comment from Primal Gamer and whoosh, just kind of smash them together. <laughs> uh, so we get going with a uh, nice uh, yeah, gift shop that has a Saimang habitat kind of built around it um, and kind of themed around it and everything. So yeah, thanks so much Primal Gamer. That's always a um, good recommendation there. And then the last one I want to highlight is from Mr. Domez who uh, just simply says, Frank! Thank you, Mr. Domez. That's always appreciated. We need the Frank comment and it, it, it's uh, every single video, right? <laughs> nice. So, hey, let's go ahead and uh, we will scoot on over, uh, like I was uh, hinting at there, to our new area as it gets a little bit dark, but that's not a big deal. It should shift over to uh, daylight soon. But yes, let's shift over to the west side of the oasis, uh, which is the, yeah, again, the left side of our big um, entrance area. So the uh, vibe over here is dense, dense dense jungle just kind of the same that we were doing uh with the oasis but trying to do it almost even more so so we are right across from our quakas and yeah as you can see here we have a again a lot of dense foliage and uh, a bunch of little pathways these are all like two meter wide um, little pathways that make a little um winding path system and it's great to actually see the guests um yeah as you can see here actually go through and use them um and it's almost like a little exploring little bit that's what i want this project to be a lot about since we're kind of using the jungle theme um it's really easy to make a lot of like exploring and stumbling upon um kind of themed items or habitats and all that kind of fun stuff so these little uh, intricate pathways as you're walking through here again want it to feel like you're just kind of walking through and then all of a sudden like hey what is that back there is that a oh yes it is it's a building that says oasis treasure yeah, this is the facade here for um, our Oasis Treasures um, souvenir gift shop and everything. So, uh, yeah, here you go. It's like an old, uh, derelict, decrepit uh, jungle building where the jungle is starting to take back over and everything. And actually, perfect timing on the morning uh, here, the sunrise, because as we kind of go around with uh, more of this theme, the uh, sunrise right over this way looks really, really good um, with everything. So, yep, lots of vines, lots of uh, overgrown foliage, lots of random uh, signage everywhere just to kind of get the vibe of this whole area and the whole facade again for our oasis treasures and the um Saimang habitat overall as well so a uh, big shout out to jay rasik for these telephone poles they made these um part of their utility pack and um went ahead and stuck those in had made the uh, actual lines out of the vines uh in game thought that had been a nice little touch to show that the um, power lines have been fully taken over by the uh the, the vines and everything there right so um we'll go inside in just a quick quick second there but as we come around the corner a uh, little bit more storytelling and everything we have this uh, back side of this building and a little water tower and uh, went ahead and did some water jets with a um, fallen uh, tree stump here uh, so a little bit of environmental storytelling and everything got these buckets um, down in front here you know you could just imagine them saying ah just screw it just put the buckets down in front and catch all the water it's fine it's totally fine so i uh, got that little uh bit right there and the last little thing is we have this uh insect hotel uh, i can't remember who this is built by i'll try to remember um to link it down below along with all the other uh blueprints you used today but yeah just kind of took the initial base of the insect hotel here gussied it up for our biome and everything and uh yeah that was a nice little bit of um you know little habitat off to the side it's not usable obviously uh, unfortunately but um just a nice little bit of uh 
uh, scenery piece right there. So let's head back to the um, entranceway of the Oasis Treasures, the um, doorway over here. So we'll have a little conversation before we go in here about two things real quick. So first one is you're going to see a staff member uh, standing outside here and zero guests going in. So the big thing with this, which is very, very disheartening, is unfortunately... This gift shop that you're about to see is unusable. Uh, there is a bug right now that um, I've went ahead and reported, as well as many, many other people um, on the um, official website and all that, bug reporter and stuff like that. But yeah, so as you can see, our staff member, um, no matter what you do, they get so confused and so lost and just cannot go to the uh, gift shop. So um, I've tried this uh, with an empty space. I, I, basically, if you could recommend it down in the comments. I probably tried it. <laughs> um, I sat here for uh, not only, it, it was a long time. Let's just cut to the chase. It was a long time uh, to the point where, yes, I went to the forums and all that fun stuff. And this is a known bug since it looks like about December. Um, but yeah, so uh, unfortunately, everything you're about to see inside here uh, is very unusable um, at the moment. So hopefully they get this bug um, fixed because, uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. Like, uh, luckily, our zoo is making a real, uh, like a lot of money from donations bins and entry fees and everything like that and uh, restaurants and everything like that but you know if I was playing this and kind of dependent on this uh, souvenir shop to make money like they're supposed to um, and you know we pour all this money into it and it kind of doesn't it's kind of like oh shoot you know you're just kind of between a rock and a hard place there so uh, again luckily we're doing okay but it really stink if you took all that time to build the uh, souvenir shop depending on it for money and then it's just like nope doesn't work um, so yeah but either way it is a little disheartening to not have guests use it at the moment but again hopefully very very soon uh frontier will get on the ball and kind of get a fix out for it so and then second thing before we go in oasis treasures here i used a font piece from ricey an amazing uh creator in the community and uh, this looks really really good the way it is i really like their uh font and everything like that however it does feel a little just flat a little just stickered on there right um and i would like something a little bit more of uh, substantial but i am uh i don't have the patience and to do signage and i know there are some of you out there that are very very good at doing uh custom signs in game so um this is your kind of space right here uh to use it's about a four by four uh wall maybe about just a little under but um i can make it uh work to depending what you give me there. So, but yeah, if you have an idea uh, for our Oasis treasures here, uh, definitely um, send that my way. Um, and I would love to uh, put that there. We'll definitely um, uh, give you some credit, you know, um, maybe honor you with name this building after you or something else. We'll definitely uh, give you some uh, honoring credit later on and everything. So um, enough jib jab, let's head on into uh, what may be one of my favorite builds I've done in a long time. And this is Oasis treasures, the interior uh, for our gift shop here. So yeah, this, this was like I just said, this was was a lot of fun <laughs> um, spent a lot of time on it uh, this is probably about iteration four or five or so um, trying to get everything kind of working how I wanted it to but yeah very very happy with um, how everything finally uh, kind of turned out here so just kind of giving you a real quick lay of the uh, land before kind of talking about all the details but uh, first and foremost, have to shout out again, uh, Ricey, because I used a lot of their, um, they have the potted plant set, they have kind of like a trinkets and uh, just stuff, I guess you'd say, uh, uh, set as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of this stuff just really, really um, helped bring this build alive and everything. All these little like soaps and uh, I don't know, like cologne or perfume dispensers. So, uh, but yeah, that is the name of the game in here uh, for this interior build was just stuff, stuff, stuff. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so just some highlights real quick to um, kind of point in your direction. So the first one being over in the corner over here, we have our uh, little Fibo machine. So I kind of picture that as like an Instagram wall almost or little, um, yeah, just picture corner. Um, for your families or again Instagram um, social media kind of stuff to draw attention to the zoo so a little uh, photo corner over there we also have up here our little uh, cage behind um, just stuff wall again like I just said I wanted to get as much stuff it didn't have to be one theme it could be all the themes uh, but kind of just on the ceiling there uh, kind of cage behind so that was uh, again just really really fun going through all the props and different blueprints that people have made and stuff like that so um, yeah as we kind of come through here this is kind of the first half of the shop um, which is again primarily focused on uh, just a lot of uh, shopping and um, little art pieces and stuff like that but as we move over to the second half which is divided uh, by this board 
part right here, we get a little bit of a, a special uh, viewing opportunity. So as we kind of move forward and move to the left and everything, start to get a little peek here of the uh, interior Saimang habitat. So yeah, our gift shop, uh, kind of borders right up against it. So you get these really cool, unique uh, views here. So I don't know if the guests um, actually will view the like animals from inside here or if like once they get into the gift shop, if they're like, how do I say it? Like programmed to just focus on gift buying, you know what I mean? So it would be kind of cool if once they get in here, uh, once that's all fixed up and everything, if we can actually see if they're like shopping, if they like turn around and actually look at like the animals um, inside the interior here, there's a little sneaky peeky of some of our Saimangs hanging out. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool if they kind of did a little bit of both. So we'll have to keep an eye on that once uh, everything kind of gets fixed up here, hopefully uh, shortly. So, and then another little thing with these um, little lookout windows is I didn't want them to just be plain old big open windows. I kind of wanted them to be um, again almost like I always use this term uh, but it's the best I can come up with uh, almost like little peekaboo um, see-throughs where the foliage and netting and trellises it's almost just like overgrown to where you can't really see if you're not like fully fully paying attention you might kind of overlook it almost or if you're just looking for you know shopping primarily you might just be like oh heck did I just see something move back there? Yeah, just kind of like one of those kind of deals so um, that was kind of the idea behind that so um, but yeah, as we're coming through here just uh, again a lot more stuff 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 everywhere um, again shout out to Ricey um, for their amazing um, interior set um, had to hang up a boat, found a perfect little boat from the Oceania pack that uh, fit in scale-wise really, really well here. Um, also have kind of a secluded off uh, t-shirt section. So um, yeah, it's, I don't know, I was trying to just hit on all the fun little things that you would see in a gift shop and um, have little details all over the heckin' place, right? It's just uh, one of those things you feel like you could get lost in here or just want to stay in here for a long time uh, to build and everything like that. So um, one little quick... Um, Thing that I will point out um, is that the ceiling here, you'll notice it's uh, kind of glass or kind of see-through, uh, which is kind of random, but uh, the original idea for this whole build, and we'll get into the Saimang habitat here in just a second because it leads right into it, is that right here there used to be a big old hole and a lot where a lot of these supports were, um, there was a glass uh, floor and everything, and I wanted the Saimangs to actually be above you as well. Uh, it ended up not working like that, but I thought that would have been a kind of a cool idea is as you were shopping through here, you you just kind of look up and again same idea with like the ivy and foliage kind of growing over you just kind of just barely get a glimpse of the saimangs up there or kind of hanging out and everything and i had it uh proof of concept kind of worked out where the uh keepers could get up there and all that fun stuff and it worked out but it was going to be kind of just a pain in the rear end and make this uh build way longer and way bigger um if you can imagine uh than it already is so um anyways that's just a little peek behind the curtain of maybe we'll try that kind of um, idea later on in a build so uh, but yeah here's your uh, again a quick little glimpse into the oasis treasures uh gift shop so uh, let's actually go forward through the gift shop and we did get a little peek at it before but uh we'll take a look here at the interior of the um of their uh the Saimang's interior basically yeah they're whenever it starts to rain because it rains here a lot on the south america map um but yeah as of right now we have three uh three Saimang's. we have a um mom dad pair and then their uh little uh female baby so there they are right there everyone's hanging out inside it might be kind of hot out too uh, i think that might be another thing that influences um, certain things here and there. So I didn't want to go too crazy on the details on the interior. Um, I looked up a lot of different reference photos and a lot of them, um, well, some of them have like really, really good interiors. Don't get me wrong, but um, a majority of them that I was actually, that I was personally looking up didn't have too uh, crazy interiors as far as like plants or, um, you know, paintings or I don't know, murals, just a lot of different stuff. It was very plain, just a lot of climbing materials for them and uh, maybe a few like sleeping areas and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that is very, that's why it's pretty plain Jane. But actually once you start to get out to the exterior, that's where uh, things get pretty, pretty fun. So we'll actually go on the exterior here. And um, I know they're all inside, which I wish they were coming outside right now, but that's all right. But uh, we have the um, Sai Meng um, Island. Um, on the back side here. So yeah, this was a ton of fun. And like I was saying before with the interior, I looked up a bunch of reference photos. And um, I think the main one I took a reference from was the Pittsburgh uh, Zoo. And there was another zoo in England. I, I don't, I can't remember if it was the Chester or um, a different one. But yeah, anyways, there was a lot of um, like different islands for 
of the uh, Saiming habitats, and I just love that idea. Um, so yeah, here is our Saiming Island with a bunch of um, kind of man-made uh, constru or, uh, brachiation uh, swinging uh, sets here. So that is always the really cool thing uh, with the Saimangs is not only their uh, super duper loud call, which you can hear all over the front of the zoo, which just makes me so giddy whenever I load into this and hear the Saimangs calling all over the place, but it's also seeing them do their brachiation, right? So uh, those are the two big things that you want to um, see from them. So uh, then, yeah, no, that, this is just kind of an overview of the whole um, gift shop and Saimang um, exhibit and habitat. Um, the guest viewing area is kind of plain right now. Um, um, but I don't really know at the moment what we're doing on the back side of this, so that will get kind of expanded upon as we kind of figure out what we want to do um, in the future builds and everything. So um, there you go. So yeah, that is the um, main big part of the build. Um, again, we have little bits of um, set pieces here and there. Here's one I almost forgot to over, uh, or I almost overlooked. Whoa, come on, back up camera. Um, starting to put out these, like I said, little set pieces, like so little tents and Jeeps, you know, just uh, little story set pieces that just kind of add on to uh the character and ambiance of this uh this whole um jungle kind of vibe and uh, project that we have going on here we also have a you know hammock out here so i just want to tell these little fun little stories thinking of um adventureland and jungle cruise and uh at disneyland and disney world a whole bunch um as kind of influence for these fun little quirky um side stories and stuff like that so uh but yeah anyways that is is it? It is. It is. There we go. <laughs> that is everything uh, for this episode. So sorry that I was, again, bonehead of the year. Moron. He's a knucklehead. Uh, early nomination this, this early in the year. Uh, for deleting the builds and everything like that and kind of, uh, you know, having y'all miss uh, some years on the uh, zoo. But, you know, in the long run, it really was just one habitat um, added and some um, a few Saimang and everything. So while we did jump forward a few years um, in the build, we did get a lot done in that time uh, while also not getting a lot done, if that makes sense, right? So <laughs> we got a lot of research done. Uh, we got a lot of vet research done. Uh, but also at the same time, it's not like uh, the entire zoo is built out or anything. We just kind of uh, set ourselves up for success um, for future episodes so um, yeah there you go so speaking of future episodes would love as always um, as you saw you know I read off all your comments and everything we'll always love to hear your feedback and uh, comments on what you uh, think the direction of our franchise zoo uh, should go so if you have um, any ideas for um, some new animals or new habitats do let me know um, and yeah like I said in the next episode I do want to start to look at some uh, more management because our security is getting a little bit out of hand um, and a couple with that we do need to take a, uh, another look at our Asian water monitor habitat, kind of expand that out. Uh, let's give them the habitat that they deserve, right? Let's not uh, kind of skimp on that. Let's give them all the space that uh, they can get because we have the money and the resources and the land uh, to do so. So, um, but yeah, no, so again, let me know your thoughts. I always um, love hearing them and uh, let me know what kind of habitats and animals that we should focus on next. And yeah, we'll kind of end here taking a look at our uh, family of Saimangs and everything. So yeah, hey, thanks so much everyone for uh, viewing viewing as always and hanging out on this little uh, tour catch up here and uh, yeah we'll uh, have another episode of franchise mode out very very soon again I'm loving uh, building in this uh, zoo um, whether it's in uh, live stream or uh, the long form here and everything this is such a fun time uh, doing franchise mode and getting a totally different uh, kind of look at um, uh, Planet Zoo and everything so um, also a little update to the um, channel and everything for Planet Zoo um, I did just finish the Europe pack mini zoo which is a sandbox zoo I had been working on a long time so if you are um, kind of liking my build style um, I do have the same kind of build style and um, everything like that in a different kind of uh, setting so if you uh, want to check that out there is a uh, just under 10 minute tour of that coming out then also there'll be a very long form tour where I kind of give my behind the scenes thoughts and ideas um, behind all the areas of that one so that video is up right now so you can check that out and um, yeah I'm starting to formulate a new idea uh, for a new sandbox um, zoo and everything which I'm very very excited for and that should be coming out in the next uh, few weeks as I kind of again formulate the idea and get the uh, first episode out but uh, yeah I'm very excited to uh, showcase different ideas for that so uh, but yeah anyways uh, check that out if you have it and also uh, like I said before comment below and all that kind of fun stuff so hey thanks so much everyone always appreciate you and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next one of the uh, next franchise zoo.